All right, if A is closed set and it contains every rational number between 0 and 1, then 0 and 1 is contained in A. So let's suppose, no, that's not the word starting with S that I wrote. The word starting with S that I wrote is since. Since A is closed, and contains this interval intersected with the rationals. A C A complement is open and does not contain zero one intersect with Q. Um, so assume for contradiction I'll abbreviate this way, that there exists some x in this interval from 0 to 1 such that x is not in A. Then, well, if x is not in A, then x is in A complement. This means, and I didn't mean thick, I meant this means. Um, so A complement is open, so it must so this point must have an open neighborhood. And we know that the open sets on the real line, um, in particular, um, ooh, now that I think about it, this is a slightly deeper real analysis fact, but the fact that open sets are um, open sets on the real line are always countable disjoint unions of open intervals. So I guess this does use something that's a little deeper, but uh, maybe we can get away with it here. Um, in either way, it should be a little bit straightforward, or at least intuitively obvious that this means that there exists A and B and R, such that X is contained in this open interval A and B it's contained in AC. And in fact, let's see here, at this point in Spivak, I think we've actually only defined open sets to be open intervals of this type. And so this is literally what it means for a set to be open. Um, oh, but then, yeah, you'd have countable, uh, possibly uncountable unions would be open too, but that's a separate exercise. I don't know. This whole this whole section is a little weird because he gives you some facts but not all of the facts that are useful in topology. Well, let's just say we can do this. Uh, we can stick X in some open interval. Um, then at least one of AX and XP is contained in this interval. Um, because certainly if X is, if you've got this interval here, closed interval, and you've got like X in the middle here, then sure, an A and B like here would be fine, but maybe A goes outside. Um, so, hmm. Now that I think about it, here's how we want to write this: at least one of closed interval from zero to x, and closed interval from one to x. Ooh. Hmm. So we have to include all of those cases, either 0 to x, a to x, x to b, and x to 1, then at least one of these is, um, 
contained in 0, 1, and um, should write and contains more than one point. So basically the point is, ha, huh, the point is we're going to get a line segment that's contained in 0, 1, and that's going to yield our contradiction. Um, the reason I had to concern like more than one point, like say what if x is equal to zero, then certainly the closed interval from zero to zero is contained in there, but that's not going to yield a contradiction. However, um, if x is equal to zero, then either x to b or x to one, one of those two is going to be contained entirely in the interval from zero to one, and both of these contain more than one point. So it should be fairly straightforward that this is a true statement. Um, so anyways, so and contains more than one point. Um, so suppose without loss of generality, let's say, yeah, let's say x to b is such a set, i.e. Um, x half open interval from x to b is contained in uh, the interval from 0 to 1 and it contains more than one point. And then the same when I say without loss of generality, um, what I the reason I'm using that here is that the same argument will work in the other cases. Um, so now Q is dense in this interval. So there is some rational number Q in here. But then Q is an A complement because this is right because this entire interval is contained in blah blah is contained in because of this because the entire interval is contained in A complement so in particular this Q being in here must be contained in A complement. Um, and this is a contradiction. And that's because a complement does not contain this set here. And well, this Q would be in there, so that's a contradiction. And so hence, Um, there does not exist an x in 0, 1 such that x is not an A, i.e. for all x in 0, 1, x is an A, i.e. 0, 1 is contained in A. And this completes the proof. Now, there, now, this is a proof by contradiction, and that's the most straightforward way I saw to do this problem. So there might be nicer ways to do this, but this one's pretty short anyways, so it shouldn't be too bad. The other issue is that I'm pretty sure Spivak hasn't mentioned the, um, the fact that closed sets contain their limit points. And if you use that fact, that makes this proof very quick because you take any point in 0, 1, and you say, okay, well, if it's a rational number, then it's contained in A, so we're done. If it's an irrational number, then we know that there is a sequence of rational numbers which converge to that point. And we know that closed sets contain their limit points. And so then A, because all of those rational numbers 
um, that approach this limit point, all those rational numbers are contained in A, and so since A is closed, that limit is contained in A as well. Um, but that holds for any irrational um, number in the interval from 0 to 1, and so therefore the entire interval from 0 to 1 is contained in A. So that's a much faster proof, but it uses that closed sets uh, contain their, all of their limit points, which is not something we've covered, but oh well, for now, this proof should suffice.